Onyx got started in 1995. Um, before that, um, it was just a little idea um, at the Media Lab. Um, Alex and I, uh, Alex is the other co-founder, uh, were uh, office mates at the Media Lab. We actually met um, and we both had a lot in common. Uh, both of us were really interested in music and really interested in technology. And the Media Lab, at the time, the, uh, the group was called the Computer Music Group with uh, Todd Macover as the professor. Um, and it was the perfect place for us. We completely hit it off. We became really good friends right away. And around 1995, actually, Alex had the idea. He, he approached me and he said, hey, Iran, let's start a company and we can just continue to do uh, these, these great things that we've been doing at the lab, but it can be our job. And, and at the same time, we also were starting to formulate what the mission statement of the company should be, um, which was to, uh, to bring the joy of performing music to the masses. Essentially, that was, that was the, big, the big point. When we entered the competition, actually it was my idea to enter it, I thought, hey, you know what, we've never done anything like this before. Um, it seems like at least entering a competition will force us to write a business plan. We've never written a business plan before, you know. Um, and we kind of started working on it. It turns out Alex's father had been involved in startups before. Um, and so we at least had a little bit of a, of a place to start. Um, and, and it was really just doing it, just applying and, and forcing ourselves to write a business plan, I think just itself was an invaluable uh, thing from, from, the, uh, from the business plan competition. Um, but of course, it provided much more than just practice writing a business plan. You know, once we actually submitted it, we got uh, to essentially start networking. It was the first time that we met other people in the sort of the entrepreneurship circle at MIT, and um, it was really, really helpful. I mean, first of all, our office space was my bedroom, um, and I had my computer set up there, and <laughs> it was it was a little embarrassing, but you know, I would sleep on a futon, then set it up a deck couch, and then the next you know, in the next hour we'd have investors coming over and it sort of looked like an office, but it was actually my bedroom. Um, so the, the very beginning was angel rounds. You know, we had friends and family. Uh, we raised $100,000 as our first, in our first A round. And uh, that was enough money to just kind of get, you know, get the ball rolling. The, the thing that happened to harmonics which was also the thing that everyone told us would happen, but we never believed, was that what, whatever it is that you guys do, it's gonna change. Um, you might have this thought right now, which is the thing that you think is gonna make your company huge, and in fact, it's gonna be something completely different. And all those wise people who told us that, they were completely right. No, not at the start, I had no idea. I mean, we were, um, we had liked video games. We'd always, always liked video games and always liked music. Um, but the, the notion of combining them together really didn't hit us until a little while later. You know, the, the great thing about video games is that they give you a purpose. You know, they give you a goal and they're really, they're really good about um, creating this sort of addictive behavior. You know, if you design your video game correctly, you'll have people playing it a lot. And our first couple of experiences that we were making were fun music experiences, but they were not games. They didn't really pull people in. And it was really when we started making games that we discovered that this was the true path to, uh, to getting our mission statement executed. I mean, I remember Alex standing up in front of the company after we were done and saying, all right guys, you know, we're gonna make 75,000 people very happy, but that's about it. You know, don't get your hopes up. We'll probably have to go off and do something else. Because music games have never been very successful. Peripherals have never been very successful, meaning they're always, there are these two niche markets. And certainly having a, a game that requires a peripheral, you know, it, surely that's doomed to failure, right? But as it turns out, it, it exactly hit the right, the right formula. Um, between holding a guitar 
and all the lessons that we've learned about making games, and you know, we really kind of fine-tuned the art of making music games and figured out how to make them more fun and more inviting and more addictive and um, you know more more personal. Um, that in combination with the guitar really is what is what did it. And um, and I remember seeing the sales numbers coming in, and they looked very different from all other games we've ever made. Uh, and at that point, we knew we had some. Oh yeah, yeah, we had a huge party. <laughs> there was a huge Guitar Hero party. There was. Um, uh, there have been lots of parties since then. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, everyone seems to kind of get bigger than the previous one. Uh, but it's it's been a wild ride since then. Be careful who you hire. It's hiring, in my opinion, is the most important that, uh, thing that you can do. Um, good good hiring practices will will keep your company alive. Um, there is a lot of pressure sometimes to hire when uh, you know when deadlines are approaching and you need to ramp up. And if you are not hiring the right people, then you think. You might be getting some, some short-term benefit from it, but it, it, at the end of the day, it'll be a problem. And the thing that's, uh, I think, kept Harmonix really strong is our hiring practices and, and our insistence that we hire people that, that aren't just technically the best, but that fit in culturally. I remember there were, there were definitely moments where we were thinking, are we doing the right thing? You know, maybe we should be focusing on other kinds of games because these music games they don't really seem to be kind of taking off you know but um, but because we had resilience we were we, we had the patience to, to wait for, for you know for the the tipping point and mind you we didn't even win so I for all the folks out there who um, are trying this thing out and whether you didn't win first place or even you didn't you didn't win at all you know don't despair we're, we're an example of a success story that um, entering the 10K and not winning didn't affect our outcome, you know. Um, so, if your vision is strong and you know you have you have the will, you can make a way. So, you know, just keep at it, no matter who you are.